Hi there. Welcome to the first lecture of my series 6 minutes or less. And today I will be covering development of face and oral cavity. Make sure to watch till the end to check what you have retained with some questions. Now before going directly into the development, let us start all the way back when the fertilized egg undergoes multiple cell divisions to form motilla, which then organizes to form blastocyst. This structure undergoes the process of gastrulation to give rise to our three germ layers, namely ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. By the end of third week of the intrauterine life, these are arranged in a sandwich or disc-like manner. Thus, the development of face and oral cavity begins by the fourth week of intrauterine life. Remember, initially in the cephalic portion of this disc. the pericardial bulb responsible for the formation of heart lies ahead of the precordial plate which means if this were to continue the heart would lie above our mouth but thankfully that does not happen because of folding that occurs in the cephalic region leading to shrimp like structure of fetus as shown in the figure i'm replacing this with my simplified diagram and here i think you can make out a pit present which is actually stomodium our future oral cavity Now let's have a closer look at the cephalic region. In this region there is simultaneous development of brain vesicles which push some part of the mesoderm anteriorly leading to the formation of frontonasal process. Thus the stomodium is now bound above by the frontonasal process and below by the cardiac bulge. Apart from this there is presence of buccopharyngeal membrane which later disintegrates such that the stomodium opens into foregut. Now take note of the fact that the development of face and oral cavity is mainly attributed to the frontonasal, mandibular and the maxillary processes. Now try to visualize the fetus from front. As previously discussed, we can see the frontonasal process. Apart from this, the first pharyngeal arch, also called the mandibular arch, contributes to the development of face. The frontonasal process grows downwards. The mandibular arch splits bilaterally into two processes namely the maxillary and the mandibular process. Observe the thickenings developed in the frontonasal process namely nasal placodes and lateral most thickening the lens placodes. The nasal placodes then form a pit which communicates with the stomodium and simultaneously thickens and differentiates to form median nasal process and lateral nasal process. The median processes try to fuse in the midline and as these structures move anteriorly the lens placodes shift towards the midline. The mandibular process fuses in the midline. Observe the presence of a defector cleft present between the lateral nasal process and the maxillary process which acts like a connection between the future eyes and the oral cavity. This is nasooptic furrow which later canalizes to form nasolacrimal duct. Now let's have a look at these structures developing from respective processes of the face. The frontonasal process gives rise to the forehead, the lateral nasal process gives rise to rise to the ala of nose and the median nasal process gives rise to the tip of the nose. The maxillary process gives rise to the cheeks. Take note that the upper lip is formed by the approximation of maxillary process from both sides with the frontonasal process. while the philtrum is mainly derived from the maxillary process alone now here is a diagram from orban's book of oral histology and embryology this completes the first part of this lecture let's start with the development of palate the palate develops in two portion first the primary palate develops from fusion of median nasal process while the secondary palate develops by the two maxillary palatine processes In horizontal view we can see the primary and secondary palate approximating each other each other and in the vertical view we can see the nasal septum approaching the two palatine processes the portion that ossifies is called the hard palate while the non ossified portion is called the soft palate now some figures to explain the same and this completes our lecture in case you like this session make sure to like share and subscribe And as promised here are some questions from this lectures you can also comment the answers in the comment section below